Hello everyone, this is Larry Barabino Jr., the CEO of NARD Commission. I want to welcome you all to NARD TV. Today we're going to talk about NARD and what NARD has to offer, the great things that NARD is doing. So we want to talk about a few things specifically. We're going to talk about today, NARD is celebrating 75 years. NARD has been in existence since 1947, and today, we again, we celebrate uh, 75 years, and we, we're going to make sure you guys are aware of everything that we're offering today. We're going to talk about the different events that we're hosting for our 75th anniversary and different fundraisers. We're also going to talk about teen programs and youth programs and how you can be involved in NORD, whether you're coming as a participant or whether you're coming as a volunteer, because NORD offers something for everyone. And today we're going to start with our very first guest uh, on NORD TV, Ernest Price, who's the chairman of the, he's the board chairman of the NORD Foundation. Good morning, Ernest. Good morning, Larry, and thanks for having me. I'm uh, glad to be here today. Okay. So listen, let everyone know, talk a little bit about the foundation and what does the foundation do? So the Nord Foundation was created in 2010 and it was voted upon by the citizens of New Orleans and the purpose in mind was to create a public-private partnership that would help strengthen the Nord Commission and be a way to solicit private funding to support the operations of the Nord Commission. Okay, so tell me about some of the great things that the foundation do in partnership with NORD as it relates to some of the programming and things that it support. So what the foundation does, we work closely with your team to try to figure out the needs from a programming perspective. And then we reach out to potential donors and solicit funding in order to support those operations. So I mean, NORD C provides great value to the citizens of New Orleans and the foundation as a representative to communicate that those to potential stakeholders who have an interest in supporting those types of programs and recreation for the citizens. So is there room, is there a way, is there an opportunity for more entities to be a partner, to be a sponsor and a contributor, and if so, how? Most definitely. Uh, you know, there, NORD provides a ton of programming and a ton of activities for the citizens in New Orleans. and. We're always looking for more funding so we can even strengthen what NORD already provides. We, you know, everybody knows about football and basketball and swimming and other things like that that NORD provides. But there's other there's programming like ballet and music and things that people don't necessarily associate with NORD that you know we're always looking for funding to support those types of activities as well. Okay, so NORD is celebrating 75 years. What role will the foundation play in all the celebrations that's happening this year and the activities? And what are you guys looking to do to help commemorate this 75 years? Yeah, so what, as you said, NORD is celebrating a momentous occasion, 75 years of providing a very valuable service to the citizens of New Orleans. And what the foundation wants to do is we're partnering with the NORD Commission to try to get the word out on a number of events that we're having. We're going to kick off the celebration of 75 years with a golf tournament, the first annual golf tournament that's going to be hosted at the Joseph Bartholomew Bar Golf Course in Pontchartrain Park on May 21st from 8 to 3 p.m. And, you know, we're looking for people of the community, private citizens, to support the golf course. You know, it's going to be a fun day. We're going to get together, have fun on the golf course, you know, continue to talk about the great things that NORA does and you know, get a chance for the private citizens to meet the team that's behind the scenes making all these great things happen at so, North Sea. So, so what I'm hearing is, one, we're looking for golfers, right? Right. right. Whether you're an individual or teams of four. But then also tell me how can a person be a sponsor of this golf tournament? Okay, yes, you know, there, there's a website, and I don't remember it off the top of my head, but you can go ahead and register for the golf tournament, the website is www.nordc.org slash 75th anniversary. And when you go to that website, it'll bring you to a page where you can sign up and register. And there are different levels of participation. You can be a whole sponsor, uh, you can be a silver sponsor, you can be a gold sponsor. And, you know, depending on the level of funding you can commit, it will determine kind of the sponsorship that you're allowed. 
and you know we're we're not only looking for those to contribute for whole sponsors and silver and gold sponsors but we're also looking for potential food vendors and beverage vendors to kind of support the endeavor as well so we you know the acts from the foundation of the community is you know take a look go to the website take a look at it register it, and think about how you can contribute because this will be the first of a number of events we also have you know you know refer to my list of events that's coming up we have <clears throat> nord's inaugural alumni picnic which will take place and july 23rd at joe brown park in new orleans east so you know we're going to be looking for sponsors to support that we're also having our second annual race of champions which will take place at various Nord recreation centers on september 17th and the first race of champions happened in 2019 right before the pandemic and it was a great event you know it got private citizens of the community to kind of see the facilities in a different light you know, you get up close and personal, see what's in those facilities, and we're trying to replicate that again to kind of bring some notice to these great facilities that NORD has to offer to the citizens of New Orleans. And at the end of the year, we're going to be having a soiree that's going to take place at the Lafitte Greenway Station. So, you know, we have a number of events that are coming up throughout the rest of the year, starting off with the golf tournament that's going to happen on May 21st. So we encourage you to, again, visit that website, www.nordc.org slash 75th anniversary. Also want to add that we're launching a Nord online store where they'll have signature t-shirts from the parks, lapel pins, and 75th anniversary yard flags where you can purchase to kind of get into the grooves of celebrating the 75th anniversary of Nord because it is definitely a momentous occasion for an entity that has been providing value to the citizens of New Orleans for over 75 years. It's something that we should definitely celebrate. And we, you know, asking for your support to help in that celebration. Yeah. So, so, so with saying that, just to climb on top of what Ernest said is, we're definitely looking for our residents uh, to come out now. North has been in existence for 75 years. So we're looking for those that been around since 1947 to current, whether you're a senior, that's participating in our programs, whether you've been a, a volunteer coach, a mentor, a parent, a current program participant, we want you guys to come out and participate in all these celebratory events that we're having while we're commemorating our 75th anniversary. So again, as he's indicated, the golf tournament. Right now, we're looking for golfers to come out and participate in the golf tournament. You know, so from there, it's the alumni picnic. And that's for everyone that's an alumni of NORD, whether you're a parent, a parent, a participant, uh, a volunteer coach, or et cetera, because it's, NORD has always uh, modeled itself on something for everyone, as its motto says. So I definitely want to thank you, Ernest, for being here on this segment. Okay? Right, and we you. look forward to having these conversations more as we continue to expand what we're offering here at NORD. Yeah, and Larry, before we close, I just wanted to add that for those who decide to donate to the NORD Foundation, it is a nonprofit, so your you know your donations are tax you, for tax purposes. You can put the nonprofit donation, and I didn't add at the beginning that I've been a part of the foundation for five years since 2017, and uh, it, it's something that's very important for me. I've served as chairman of the foundation since 2019, and it's the reason why it's so important to me. And I hope you know this impresses upon you the value and the work that the NOR Commission does is. You know, this is an outlet that North Sea provides an outlet for our citizens from a recreation and program perspective that they can find, you know, value in. And it, it the, the programming activities are top notch and the facilities are top notch. So I do hope that you decide to get involved with NORD, whether it's financially or volunteering, but we welcome any support that the citizens of New Orleans can provide to help support this great cause. Thank you. Right. So, so one more thing before you go. So we already talked about the 75th anniversary, right? So we have 
uh, www.norc.org forward slash 75th anniversary where you can go and you can look at all the great things that NORD have going. But also we have just uh, everyday activities and programming that's going on where you can just go to nordc.org. But if a person wants to contribute and donate, what is the website for the foundation on how they can contribute to the foundation on behalf of NORD? So Larry, you're going to trick me up on this. I don't know. The web address off the top of my head, I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm not going to quote it. But if you do go to Nord C's website that Larry just quoted, the foundation has a tab right on there. And I believe it's www versus, instead of Nord C, it's Nord F. But I don't, don't misquote, I don't want to get misquoted on that. So what you're it's saying. Easy, it's an easy link from the Nord C page. Gotcha. So what you're saying is, is go to the Nord's website, nordc.org, and click on the link for the foundation because it's a partnership. Right. So you're supposed to be able to go from one to the other. So again, it is great to have you on the show. This is our opening show. And I want to, again, Ernest Price, the chairman of the North Nord Foundation Board, I, I enjoy working with you, and we look forward to doing more with you in the foundation for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for having me. And we're back. So I want to welcome today our next guest, uh, new guest, uh, Mr. Jermaine Hall, who's the athletic director of NOR, one of the hardest working men on the NOR team. So Jermaine, talk to me a little bit about athletics. Well, um, athletics um, with NOR, is that most people affiliate or recognize NOR for the athletic division and the sports that we provide for the youth in the community. We are in our 75th um, year of service, and athletics has been a part since the beginning. Okay. Our athletics division, obviously our biggest sport being football, um, boasts um, around 2,000 participants every season. Baseball, around um, we, we've rebounded with baseball to around 500 or so. Track, we just had a very robust track season this year. Um, but we've had, we had advancements with uh, timing systems and a, a whole lot of other advancements that, that has made our track um, one of the best in the region for recreation department, as well as um, our advancements and what we're trying to do with increasing girls programming. So our athletic department is one that's on the rise and that's, that we're continuing to grow. Constantly. So what about basketball? You didn't mention basketball. basketball any, any, any accomplishments you have in basket, basketball? Basketball, we did have an, we did have um, an excellent basketball season. We, we rejoined the Biddy franchise this year. Uh, we, we had five teams that participated in Biddy this year. And our 12-year-old Biddy team won the Nationals. They won Biddy Nationals. Um, our other teams, all of our teams did exceptionally well. Our girls' teams, they, they went into it and they, they see what they had to do and they made their advancements and we're looking to do better as we move on. But all of our teams were very proud of all of our teams in our basketball and they all did they all did exceptionally well. We're all very, very proud of them. Definitely. So you guys heard it here. Nord's Biddy All-Star 12-year-old team won the Biddy National Championship. Congratulations to those kids, to those coaches. It was a well, well oiled machine. Uh, sending big thanks to Coach Greg, Greg Christian, who manages Nord's 
Rosenwald Center, and who was also a district manager right. for pulling that team together. And again, it was an all-star team. It was kids from different playgrounds throughout the city. So, Jermaine, while we're talking sports, what do NARD have coming up this summer? Something unique, something different. What are you offering this summer for our kids and specifically our teams? Well, this year we are doing for 13 to 7 year olds, we have what we're calling um, the Summer Sports Challenge. Is it 13 to 7 or 13 to 17? 17. Okay, yeah, okay. I thought I said 17. <laughs> yeah, 13 yes, to 17. Yes, sir. Um, the Nord, um, Summer Sports Challenge where kids will, kids will be able to participate in 7-on-7 seven seven football and 5-on-5 five five basketball at several Nord facilities. Um, the 7-on-7 seven seven football will take place at Berman Stadium, well, Morris FX Jeff Stadium, Harrell, and Joe Brown Stadium. Okay. Um, the 5 on 5 basketball will take place at Morris FX Jeff um, Rec Center, Rosenwald Rec Center, St. Bernard Rec Center, and Joe Brown's Rec Center. They will, those participants will participate in 7 on 7 and 5 on 5 competition two to three days per week, and they will also have a, also have an enhancement session where they will learn character building skills, um, conflict resolution skills, okay. um, ex um, career exploration, all of those things that, that, um, that will enhance them to make them better citizens as they move along in life. Um, those, that session will be um, around six weeks in duration, um, and they will be able to earn the stipend, um, $400 stipend at the end of it, at the completion. So they will not get paid throughout. They will get play, They will get the stipend at the end of it. Right at okay. the completion. They okay. have to. Um, they would have to complete a certain percentage of it, um, majority of it, in in order to receive that stipend. Okay. So if I'm a parent of a 15 year old young lady, mm -hmm. how do I register my kid? How do I get my kid involved? Well, if if your child has already registered for summer um, for the teen summer program if they're already registered then they would just have to go online to the site and they can fill out the interest form which is on our website um, that would get them into get them into the program if they're not if they haven't um, signed up for the summer program as a team as a team program then they would have to do they would have to come in and register specifically for the summer um, sports challenge. Okay. So where can I find this information at? No, always talking about the great things they do. Mm -hmm. Where can I find this information at? It is on, you can go to the website. You can go to the Nord website, um, nordc.org, the website, okay. to get this information. Okay. So, so let me ask this question. So since we're talking sports, and you say football is your biggest sport, mm -hmm. tell me about any challenges that you have with sports. And how do you address any challenges that come about with sports? Um, biggest challenge for us would be, I would say, fan um, conduct, some some parent conduct. Okay. Um, that that has been a challenge recently, and it's not just a challenge with North; that's a challenge nationwide. Um, we do our best to curtail it. Uh, we have we have employed or we have. Institute in NOPD to cover our games, okay. um, but the fan conduct has been an issue at times. Okay. Um, we we but we do realize that it is like as I said, it is a national trend. But we are constantly we are constantly looking to improve, and we are constantly addressing things to make it better for everyone. Gotcha. We want everyone to feel safe at our games. We want our kids to come out, and everybody to come out and. and Enjoy the games for what they are. Sure. Kids having fun. Sure, sure. So, so we're saying that, listen, we want to talk to the parents directly now and talk to the spectators. Uh, NARD is developmental sports, and we want these young persons to come out and develop their skill sets, uh, work on character building, work on teamwork, and we ask the parents to allow them to have fun while right. participating. Uh, everyone likes a winner. But it's Nord's mission and goal is more or less about development for our young persons. So parents, come out, enjoy yourselves. 
you know, take your losses as you as, as the same way you take your wins, but let's continue to support our young persons in a peaceful and respectful manner. Also with that, you know, there's a certain component of NARD and athletics that uh, without the volunteers, right. uh, programming doesn't happen. Right. So what do you say about your volunteers and, and how can a person volunteer? Well, um, as you stated, uh, this doesn't work without our volunteers. Our volunteers are, are priceless commodities for, for of what we do. And we appreciate them. We, we, um, we're always looking for volunteers, good volunteers, um, to come in. And it's, an easy, it's a very easy process. Um, the, the application, it's a, it's a volunteer coaching application that requires you to complete a background check, um, submit a copy of your ID, and the application itself is only about two pages, basically general information, um, your interest, and things like that. The background check, we take the background check ourselves. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay for it. We, we pay for it. We take care of it. And it's generally back within two to three days. Okay. So tell me about any training that your volunteers and your coaching staff go through in order to work with the kids that know it. Well, we do. All of our volunteers are required to do the darkness to light training. And the darkness to light training is training basically that um, gives the coaches insight as to inappropriate behavior, what may be conceived as inappropriate behavior, uh, whether it's touching or comments that are being made uh, to, to um, um, youth and individuals that, that will be deemed possibly even criminal. So we, we definitely we stress that. We also stress trainings for specific, sports specific training. Um, our coaches are required to do USA football. They do USA basketball. We also have um, sports specific training for each of our several sports. And each, coaches are required to attend those to really increase their expertise and to learn. Because some of, a lot of our volunteers, it may be their first time even sure. um, coming into a sport or dealing with the child and teaching them the sport. So all of our coaches are required to attend these sports-specific um, clinics as well as Darkness to Light training. Okay. So what I want to do is personally say thank you to the volunteer coaches. Thank you for the time, effort, and energy that you spend with our young people, with the kids that we serve. Thank you for all that you do to help enhance the programming that NAR brings and also to help touch the young person's lives who live in the different communities where you choose to volunteer. And as, as just mentioned, if you want to volunteer, you can go to nordc.org to get the volunteer application. But also with that, you can volunteer at any park, any playground, in any community that you wish to. Uh, so we definitely want to say thank you for that. Jermaine, I want to thank you for coming on our episode representing Nord Athletics. Right. I want to, uh, again, uh, just briefly, uh, one last question as you go. So the summer team challenge, is that for boys? Is that for girls? Who is that for? And again, just once again, how can they be a part of it? It's, it's for boys and girls. It's, it's definitely co-ed. Okay. Um, and they can go to the website. They go to the website. There is a, there's actually a link on the website, on the page, on the front page. Mm -hmm. um, if they're already, if they're already signed up for summer teen camp, then that is um, pretty much all they have to do is go onto that link and fill out that form. Okay. Right. So one last question again, as you go, these programs during the summer are they morning programs, evening programs? What time of day? What days of the week? How will it operate? So the uh, summer sports program is an evening program. It's an evening program. It will run from uh, like maybe 5.30 to about 8. Okay. And it will be uh, four days a week. It runs from Monday through Thursday, possibly Saturdays. They'll schedule um, some of the final points of it are still being finalized, but um, those are the basics of it. It'll be Monday through Thursday. Okay. Yeah, um, basically 5.30 to 8. Okay, so, so you hear it right here, you hear it first, our young people, parents of our teens, 
Let's get them involved. This is something for them to do in the afternoon to keep them off the streets, to get them off your sofas at, at the home, right. from, from at the home, <laughs> but also at the end of the, the challenge, they can earn a $400 stipend, so they also will receive a payment for participating. Again, Jermaine, thank you for being a part of this segment. Thank you for being a part of this show and continue doing the great things that you're doing with athletics. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. And we'll be right back with more. So, and we're back. So, again, I want to, let me straighten this tie a little bit. So, again, I want to, uh, again, we're talking about NORD. This is NORD TV. It's our inaugural show today. I want to introduce to everyone one of my right hands, top right hand persons at NORD, Ms. Johanna Cannon Brightman, who is the Chief Programming Officer at NORD. Welcome to NORD TV. Thank you so much for having me. So, Johanna, I want you to talk about what goes on in your shop. You're the chief programming officer. You're responsible for all the programming that NORD has to offer. Tell us a little bit about what goes on in your shop and how you make the magic happen. Well, with pleasure, I have the opportunity of overseeing four dynamic divisions at NORD, aquatics division, the multi-programs division, athletics division, and the recreation centers. Um, I make the magic happen with my staff. They're hardworking, they're dedicated, we are excited about serving the community, and we look to see what the community want, and we try to meet their needs. Okay, so we're talking about, you mentioned the four different divisions that sits up under you. Let's talk about multi-programs and summer programs specifically. Tell me what's going on this summer with NOAA. So, as you know, NORD is historically known for <clears throat> the many summer camps that we offer across the city. So we're very excited to offer summer camps for both youth as well as teenagers. Um, with our youth camps, we serve ages 4 to 12 years old. We partner with many great organizations across the city who allow us to expand our capacity to serve um, almost 3,000 youth every year. Um, so we're really excited about the opportunity for youth to have programming from June 6th to July 29th. Um, each day, the participants will have breakfast and lunch. They will also participate in academic and cultural programming. They will also attend many different field trips. Um, they will also have the opportunity to visit our pools so that they can have our Learn to Swim program. It's not full swim lessons, but it does give them the opportunity to be comfortable in the water and for them to not have the fear of water so that they can learn the life-saving skills they'll need. Okay, so tell me, how many youth will have the opportunity to attend our camps this year? So right now for youth ages 4 to 12, we will serve a little over 2,000 youth. Um, right, We've been registering since March, so we do have about 800 vacancies still remaining for our youth. Um, so, so we have 1,200 youth that's already registered. So we want you parents to hear and know there's still space, there's still opportunity for your youth to come out and participate in the wonderful NORD camps that's hosted by NORD and our partners. But while we're talking about camps, let's talk about our teens. We know that we're always trying to provide different opportunities for our teens. What are we offering teens this summer? Well, the good thing about our teen camps is to transition from that youth camp to the opportunity for workforce. So we are part of the Mayor's Workforce Development Program for Youth. 
Um, we serve ages 13 to 15. They too have a, tr a, a traditional summer camp experience in that they attend from 8 to 3 p.m., but we're teaching them job skills. We're also giving them the opportunity to learn about different careers, and we want to give them the opportunity to understand resume writing, interview skills, um, proper attire, and work etiquette. So we also give them the opportunity. It's a three-week program. Um, teams have the opportunity to earn a maximum of $450, um, which equates to about $30 a day. Um, since the pandemic, we've it usually was a six-week program, but we've narrowed it down to three weeks so that we can make sure that we have social distancing and things like that. Um, but nevertheless, th within those three weeks, it will be impactful. Um, again, NORP will be operating some camps. We've also partnered with some great organizations and schools, and it'll be an opportunity for them to really have a great um, experience for workforce development and for the opportunity for them to earn a stipend. So you mentioned that it's a three-week camp. Is it just one three weeks that you're hosting this? And you say the kids will receive a stipend. Tell me about the stipend and also tell me the, uh, uh, what all that the kids, the teens will be doing. Okay. So it is two sessions. Okay. We're we offering two three-week sessions so teens can choose either session one, which operates June 6th through June 24th, or session two, which operates June 27th through July 15th. During the 8 to 3 p.m. Um, day, the students will, again, have some academic intervention. They will learn about different careers. They'll have guest speakers. They'll learn about financial literacy. They'll have some junior achievement curriculum that they'll do as well. They'll also have the opportunity to have field trips. So this is just a great opportunity for the kids to begin their work experience. Um, we have a total of 1,000 teens that we're serving um, during this program. And right now, we're at about 580 that have completed registration. So we do have some vacancies. Um, we do have a waiting list. The waiting list is only so that we can gather the information and then we'll contact everyone for appointments. Um, but again, we are looking for the opportunity to be able to serve these teens and give them that work experience. Sure, summer. sure. So basically what she's saying, and, and, and what I got is, we're enrolling 1,000 teens. We also will have uh, a waiting list in case any of the teens do not attend, any of the teens do not uh, want to participate or, or have other obligations this summer so that we can then have kids that's on a list that have their paperwork and information in and they're ready to go with the next session. So tell me what your division is doing as it relates for the 75th anniversary. What is what NARS doing? What are the chief programming officer and the divisions doing during NARS 75th anniversary? Well, we're doing a lot during the anniversary. Um, as mentioned earlier in the segment, our athletic division is spearheading the alumni picnic, which is very exciting. It's coming up in June. Um, in July, I'm sorry, at Joe, Dom, Joe W. Brown Park. We know that across the community, NORD has been impactful to many um, athletes whether they've went on to high school, college, or to the NFL. They've had the opportunity to learn those athletic skills, and it's really an opportunity for us to come back together as a family because usually at those parks and playgrounds, it's a family atmosphere. So it's an opportunity for those families to come back, and also for our current students that are participating in the programs now, they can see the opportunities that lie ahead of the, um, for them. Um, if they take the athleticism seriously and decide to go on further, whether it's to college. I mean, many of our students move forward to high school. In fact, many high school coaches come to our parks and playgrounds to recruit the kids that have participated in our program. So that's one thing we're doing for the 75th anniversary. In addition to that, we have what's called the Race of Champions coming up in September. It will be the opportunity for my FITNOLA division as well as my recreation division to allow the community and businesses to understand our world. So they will actually race around the city of New Orleans to different North parks and facilities and participate in challenges and skill um, opportunities to see whether it's basketball skill challenge um, or whether it is um, something dealing with aquatics or racing for them to see the types of programs that we offer within our many different facilities um, is a 
friendly, healthy, fun competition that will culminate in a festival type environment. So we're really looking forward to that as well. But across all of the divisions, the whole organization is excited to celebrate it. So while it's not specific to my divisions, everyone in my divisions are participating on many different committees to make sure that the community understands how excited we are to celebrate 75 years. Sure. So I just want to add something to it because, you know, New Orleans, we're such a huge uh, football city. Uh, but she, and she mentioned kids making their way to the NFL. Let's not forget that we have had uh, kids who have come out of Nord, like Avery Johnson and others who have made it to the NBA, and kids who have made it to MLB and, and other uh, professional athletic uh, fields and associations. So it's not just football here. But with saying that, I want to talk about two things specifically with you is, what are we doing with swimming pools this summer? Uh, what are we doing about lifeguards this summer? And also, on top of that, talk about your cultural programming. I want to start off with the lifeguard situation sure. because that is what's going to drive how many pools we open this okay. summer. We are excited to gear up and open many different pools across the entire city. We're very excited also to um, implement our swim lessons again. We have not had them for the past two years since the pandemic. So with that being said, there is a national shortage of lifeguards, so we are looking for lifeguards. We're very excited that civil service have allowed the opportunity for 15-year-olds to serve as lifeguards as well. And so we want want to make sure that um, we have enough staff to, to be able to open as many pools as possible. Um, we do train the lifeguards and certify them. Um, one major requirement is that they know how to swim, but once they know how to swim, we can take it from there to give them the certification. And the good thing about the certification, it's a national certification. So those that may be here for the summer for college, they can go back uh, to their universities, for example, and become lifeguards. Uh, so that's a great thing. But as I mentioned, we are going to open many different pools, both indoors and outdoors this summer. We're excited about our water aerobics, expanding it from just indoor, which we have, which is very popular uh, during the year, but to open it and offer that at our pools outdoors. We're also excited about family swim. We're excited about um, having an opportunity for the community to just come and have open swim. Um, we will require, there's no registration required, but there is a requirement once you come to the pool to sign in. And that's just for contact tracing, just in case we have an uptick. Um, and for us to understand the number of people and the capacity in the pool at, at each time. Sure. So, so, so it's great you're, you're talking about uh, uh, aquatics. What will prevent pools from opening this summer? Because I'm sure there's a challenge. There's always a challenge when you're looking to manage and open four year round seasonal pools, four, I'm sorry, four year round indoor pools and 12 seasonal pools. We know that Berman Pool is closed for the summer for major renovations and that's going to be converted to a year round indoor pool once that project is completed. But in Algiers, to make sure that there's aquatic programming for uh, those that live in Algiers, what are we doing? What are we doing for those in Algiers? And again, what would hinder us from opening any pools? Let me first say that safety is our first priority. And while the community may want the pool within their neighborhood open, without having the proper and appropriate number of lifeguards at our facility, it will either prevent us from opening the pool or it will require us to open the pool on a rotating schedule. So we're just trying to strategize to think of every safe opportunity to be able to open as many pools as possible. So I'm glad you asked that. We're also excited uh, to be able to um, partner with the um, federal city pool um, and operate that pool. So for those in Algiers, we um, have not forgot about you. We're very excited about the opportunity to be able to serve your community, and we're even more excited about what's to come in that community. As you mentioned, we are closed right now because we have a renovation happening, but we're building for the first time in that community an indoor nanatorium that will be open for the entire year, state-of-the-art facility. So we are very excited about that opportunity. Okay, listen, that's, that's exciting, definitely exciting to hear. So you guys are hearing it first. Those that live in LGS, those that live in old LGS, upper LGS, cut off, Nord is partnering with the LGS Development District to manage and operate the federal city pool this year to ensure that aquatic programming happens in LGS, whether it's 
for lap swim or free swim or water aerobics, family swim, and swim lessons because we try to make sure that everyone have the opportunity to learn how to swim, uh, of course, with us being in a city that's surrounded by water. So we're excited about that. But in order for all of these pools to open, we need lifeguards. Lifeguards, we're paying $15.91 an hour. As she indicated, you only have to know how to swim and you'll be trained, which is great. And this is something that NOAA does every year, starting at 16 years old and older. So whether your grandmother or grandfather or uncle or aunt, if there's a kid in your neighborhood that knows how to swim, encourage them to become a part of the Nord Aquatics programming this year, and they can earn $15.91 an hour. So uh, changing gears again, tell me about the uh, cultural programming, because everyone talks about the athletic side of NORD, but NORD offers way more than athletic programming. Tell me about the cultural programming that NORD offers. We're excited about the cultural programming because, as you mentioned, um, it does give them an opportunity to serve everyone. As you mentioned, the motto is something for everyone. But with our cultural programming, we have music lessons, piano lessons for both youth as well as seniors and adults. We also have um, our senior choir um, that participates in the, the um, perform across the city of New Orleans. We have art lessons that's happening um, at both um, Lions Center. We have um, art lessons that also happens at Gernon Brown. We have ceramics. Um, very small numbers of classes because of the pandemic, but this summer we're opening those numbers back up so that we can serve more. Um, in addition to that, we have visual, um, visual, um, visual arts where they can do drawing and painting as well. Um, and so those are some of the programs. We also partner with one of a, a few of our partners that offer dance programs. We have Life of Dance. We have a longstanding partnership with NOBA that also offer dance programs as well. Um, and we're really excited about the programs. We are also hiring and looking for additional instructors. So if someone may have the skills in sewing or they may have a skill in photography, we're definitely looking to expand the types of cultural programs that we offer. And we do have vacancies for those as well. Sure. So you did mention uh, a little about partnerships. Tell me about some of the uh, unique and dynamic partners that comes to the table, whether it's doing uh, after school programs, whether it's doing summer programs. Tell us about those partnerships and also tell me how can an entity become a partner? Thanks for asking. Um, the first thing is that we have what's called a school year partner that partners with us um, throughout the school year. So relatively um, from September through um, May. However, most of our partners also stay on as well, but it's called the school year partnership. Uh, while there's no funding attached to it, it gives the opportunity for NORD to fully utilize our facilities and to increase and expand our capacity to serve the community in different ways. So for example, we have a partnership with Strategic Thoughts that teaches chess to kids. Um, programs happen at multiple centers across the city of New Orleans. Um, there's a nominal fee. I want to say the max is that program, but it is very in-depth and it teaches the kids the skills and the strategies of chess. Um, it is very popular, um, so definitely enroll as soon as possible, but this information is available on our website relative to how you can register. In addition to chess, as I mentioned, we have several different dance uh, programs that partner with us. We have Takrema in the Lord Ninth Ward with Ms. Uh, Grimendi. Um, where she has a, a, an array of different types of dance programs for kids. We also have programming for um, NOLA Outrage that does like the DD4L type dancing that um, travels. In fact, they just returned back from Las Vegas for a competition. Um, in addition to that, our Life of Dance partnership, which operates at, it was primarily at Milne, is now expanding to the West Bank, so they'll have a class this summer at Berman. Um, but on our website, we list all of our different partners and an opportunity. And the great thing about that is, um, although our, we don't pay our partners to be there, our partners charge a nominal fee, no more than ten dollars per session, and they don't they, they're not allowed to turn anyone away. So it really gives us an opportunity. That application process, as I mentioned, um, begins sometimes in January, and it usually concludes in April. However, we don't want to limit our opportunity for partners. So my information is available on the website. You can send an application or send me an email to contact me directly, 
or um, there is a link on the website where they can inquire about how they can become a partner. Sure. We're very responsive and we're always looking for opportunities for sure. more organizations. So, so I'm a unique person and I want to learn how to do still walking. Can I find that at Nord? How can how can I learn how to do still walking? Absolutely. We have a partner with Casa Samba, okay. long-standing, over 20-year partnership. Casa Samba operates at our Annunciation Recreation Center. And this isn't just for adults. We also offer for kids as well. The kids programming is the Saturday morning programs and the adults programs in the afternoons. Um, but again, that is at Annunciation. And we do have a list. Um, in addition to that, Nord, um, um, we generate a brochure three times a year, spring, summer, and fall, and all of the details of all of our uh, programs, as well as the contact information, are located within those brochures. Okay, so you guys are hearing it here. You're hearing it first. But one thing that I want to put emphasis on, if you have a program and you feel your program can benefit off a partnership with NOAA, reach out to NOAA, go to our website. We're open to bringing new ideas, new programs, new partnerships to our different facilities. For example, you could go to a North Rec Center where we have teen centers, where teens can go in and just hang out with no problems, be in a safe space and enjoy themselves. Some of them have video games, some of them have pool tables, some of them have foosball tables, ice hockey, different things that they offer in them. But also with that, we have six to eight of our rec centers have fitness centers. So if you want to go in a recreational center and work out at no cost, uh, you can go You can go on our websites and identify which recreational centers have and offer that. So, so Ms. Brightman, I want to ask, uh, first, thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything that you want to add uh, that you want to make sure that our viewers know about NOAA? What I want to make sure is that the, the viewers know that our goal is to serve the community. So if a pool is not open this summer, it is not because we don't want it open. Um, the way the community can help us is to assist us by sharing our information relative to um, the need for lifeguards. Um, if there's a program that we don't offer, just know we want to offer it. And if there's someone that can partner with us, send them our way. Another thing is that, you know, we have an open-door policy for complaints. If there's an issue that we may not be aware of, allow us the opportunity to address it because we are genuinely here to serve them and we're excited about any opportunity that can help any citizen in the community, whether it's an adult, a senior, um, or youth, um, everyone. Sure, sure. Hey, listen, and, and you hear it here. You're hearing it here first. You know, if there are any concerns that a citizen have, whether it's a, a, a poor customer service at any of our facilities or if there's a facility that might need to be uh, some extra attention and eyes put on it, whether for the cleanliness of it or, repair, or repairs that need to be done, please let us know. Go to our website, norc.org, uh, send us emails. Uh, you can go to the website and identify different divisions and different persons to contact to help you with. But uh, as indicated, uh, in order for these programs to open up, in order for them to grow specifically this summer for our swimming pools, we need lifeguards. Uh, spread the word, inform everyone that you know we need lifeguards. There's something for everyone uh, at Norton, there's something offered for all. Uh, she didn't touch much on the FITNOLA programs, but we offer exercise classes throughout the city. You can find that information on our website. And again, uh, Johanna Cannon Brightman, I want to thank you for being on this episode and being with us on the Nord Show. And we'll be right back with more. As our city is opening back up, Nord is excited to welcome our patrons back to our facilities and playgrounds. Playgrounds, tennis centers, swimming pools, and our teen centers are all ready to offer you a variety of recreation activities. You can feel safe knowing that Nord is following all CDC and city's guidelines to bring our communities back to play safely. The city of New Orleans has so much to offer for recreation to its residents.
so many ways to see the city's natural beauty, explore hidden gems, and live a healthy lifestyle. It's not the Nord you remember, it's more. Jump in, create a masterpiece, or see one. With Nord, there's something for everyone. All right, so I want to thank everyone for watching today's show. And listen, I want to thank all of our guests that came out and just want to just give some reminders to everyone to make sure that you're uh, participating and you're aware of all of the 75th anniversary activities and events that we're hosting this year. Uh, definitely with our teens, our teen summer challenge for our uh, 13 to 17 year olds to participate in those programs and what we're offering this summer as it relates for our youth and teen camps and programs and our aquatic programming that's coming up and definitely those that's looking for some employment, our lifeguard positions uh, that are open, paying $15.91 an hour. Uh, we look forward to bringing more information to you about NORD as we continue to move throughout the year. I want to tell everyone, please be safe. Be, make sure that you're doing the right things, and also make sure that you're staying abreast and aware of everything that NORD has to offer. See you next time.